place of sharing the gospel and growing God's family. Uh, we have a, a bunch of announcements this morning before we get into uh, today's service. Just a reminder, next weekend there's a lot going on. Saturday is the Creek Country Christmas. And so at 9 in the morning is the birthday party, uh, birthday breakfast for Jesus for kids. Um, if you can sign up, if you want kids to go, that would be great just so we have an idea. You don't have to be signed up, though, to attend. Also, next Saturday with the country, um, Christmas going on, we have a bazaar Illinois Lutheran Schools does at the grade school as well as the high school. A lot of activities there. Um, of course, the parade is here in town that night, and after that, the Fish Youth Group, the junior high youth group, has a party here. And then next Sunday, some things are going on as well. In the afternoon, a week from today, um, whoever wants to get together to go Christmas caroling at some local nursing homes, we're going to be doing that. Contact Kara Delitis for um, some details. Her phone number and information is in the worship folder. And then next Sunday night, Illinois Lutheran High School has its Christmas concert as well. With that... Um, there have been a lot of announcements uh, regarding the Illinois Lutheran Gala that is coming up in March, and there are a lot of questions about that, too. So we have a, a video here to show that will help explain that a little bit. Put that on your calendar uh, this coming March for the gala. Uh, one other thing regarding uh, Illinois Lutheran Schools, um, there's several of our teachers that have received divine calls to be teachers elsewhere, and one of them, Mr. Jeff Ullenbrook, has a letter that he wanted read this morning. Dear members of Trinity Zion and Illinois Lutheran Schools, I want to thank you for all your prayers, conversations, and comments that you have shared with me and my family in regard to the call I received to be assistant principal at Fox Valley Lutheran High School. Having a call gives you the opportunity to really evaluate the blessings that you currently have and gives you the opportunity to evaluate the gifts God has given you as an individual as you consider where he wants you to serve. Illinois Lutheran has been a blessing to my ministry and my family. After many prayers and much deliberation, the Holy Spirit has led me to accept the call to serve as assistant principal at Fox Valley Lutheran. Monica and I and our four kids will always be grateful for the years that we have been able to serve here in Crete. We know that God will continue to bless the ministry here at Illinois Lutheran. Thank you again for your thoughts and prayers during this process. Please continue to pray for Illinois Lutheran, Fox Valley Lutheran, and my family as this transition is made. In Christ's service, Jeff Allenbrock. 
So the Holy Spirit has led Mr. Olibrock to accept this call, which means that he will be leaving and teaching at Fox Valley. Now, I know some have asked about this. That will not take place until after this school year. So during the summer is when he will make that move. Obviously, keep him and his family in your prayers, as well as our other two teachers that still are deciding their divine calls, Mr. Nate Krug and Miss Wendy Fisher. As far as today goes, today is a special day. It is Christ the King Sunday. And so with that in mind, let's begin with a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Be with us this morning, Lord. Bless our worship. As we look at your word, bless us that we may understand, that we may grow. And as we leave today, bless us that we may glorify you as our King, in everything we do. In your name we pray. Amen. The entire order of worship is printed in the service folder. It's also going to be up on the screens. You can use whichever one you want. Our opening song is As the Deer. the deer pants for the water so my soul longs after you you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you you alone are my strength my shield to you We're gathered this morning to worship our holy and triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we worship Him, let's join together in this responsive reading using Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you nations. How awesome is the Lord Most High! God reigns over the nations. God has ascended amid its shouts of joy. The Lord is the sound of Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to Him a song of praise. Let's join in humbly confessing our sins. Lord Jesus, King of kings, 
and Lord of Lords. So often, we do not treat you as we deserve. We treat you as anything but the king and ruler over all things. We don't give you the respect or obedience that we should. For these and all of our sins, forgive us. O oh Lord, be merciful to us. Amen. You have been made white as snow by the crimson blood of Jesus Christ. For the sacrifice he made paid for all of your sins and by his death, his glorious death, we know our sins and are forgiven. And so because of Christ, I tell you, all of your sins have been paid for. You are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh 
Please be seated. As this is Christ the King Sunday, our first scripture reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And here we see the Apostle Paul talking about Christ having control, having power, dominion, even over death itself. This is what the Apostle Paul says. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own turn, Christ the firstfruits. Then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come. When he hands over the kingdom of to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear this does not include God himself who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, Then the Son Himself will be made subject to Him who put everything under Him, so that God may be all in all. This is God's Word. Our next reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. And although this may seem like an odd reading now, as we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas, it fits so well. These soldiers, what they said in mockery of Jesus is actually true. Matthew chapter 27. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. Then they put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. This is the word of our Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from our Lord and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. So today is called Christ the King Sunday. Now, obviously, we aren't familiar with having a king. We aren't a monarchy here in the United States. Um, maybe the closest thing that we know is, is England, but even there, the, the monarchy is more of a figurehead than, than one that rules and controls the country. And so maybe we are at a little of a disadvantage. Christ the King Sunday. We don't really know, certainly by experience, what a king is. A king is one that, that rules and controls over so many aspects of life. And so today we're going to look at Psalm 47. Now we've actually already heard and read responsively Psalm 47. We did that in the opening responses this morning. As we look at Psalm 47, we're going to get a better idea of what it means to be a king and then glorify Christ as the king. Now one thing that we notice in Psalm 47 is that he is a king over all nations. This is what Psalm 47 said. Clap your hands, all nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. He is king over all the nations. Now, maybe when we look back in history, we can see this a little more clearly. I mean, you think of World War II. And there are any number of instances where Adolf Hitler should have pressed the attack or should have kept back but didn't. And, it, and if he had changed his decisions, the, the battle outcome would have been very different and maybe even the outcome of the entire war. You, you look back and you can see God's hand on so many things in history. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read the book of Habakkuk in the Bible. It's a very small book. It's only four small chapters. In it, Habakkuk actually complains to God because he looks at society and he sees good people, godly people, being the brunt of bad, horrible things. And then he sees ungodly, bad people, and they're prospering. And so Habakkuk, he complains to God. God don't you see this? Don't you know? Don't you care? And in a rare instance, God actually answers Habakkuk. And he says, basically, I, I do see it. I know. Just wait. They're going to get what they deserve. I'm going to send the Babylonians to destroy those wicked people. And Habakkuk, he's surprised at this because the Babylonians are known as even more cruel and horrible. And God says, I know. Just wait. I'm going to send the Assyrians to destroy the Babylonians. You see, it may not always seem this way to us, especially in the moment when we're caught up in life right now, but God is in control. He is the king over all nations. Now, now, maybe just a suggestion. Maybe read the book of Habakkuk during your devotional time this week. Like I said, short book, but a very important message. Now, one other thing I, I want to mention here. Here in the psalm, it said this. It said, clap your, your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with, with cries of joy. It's okay to clap hands. It's not a sin. We praise God. We honor Him. We glorify Him as King over all nations. We also glorify Him as King over creation. The psalm says, How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. He is king 
over all creation because he made it. He, he created it. And how awesome this world is. Here are just a few pictures to show that. Man, wouldn't you love to have that kind of view outside your back window? Or, or this one. Such calm, clear water reflecting like that and, and the beautiful fall colors. And then this is the sunrise at Niagara Falls. And that's just this planet. He is king over all creation. The Hubble telescope took this picture. This is a star going supernova exploding. Or just recently, the Cassini probe that went by Saturn took this picture. This is not a picture of our moon. This is a picture of one of the moons orbiting Saturn. And those plumes that you see, it's probably ice and water being ejected into space. Cassini also took this picture of Saturn's rings. But you notice that dot on the side and that arrow? That's us. That's Earth. We could go for hours looking at all these amazing, awesome pictures of what God has created. And if you're curious, just, just Google awesome pictures of nature and you're going to find so many of them. He is king over all creation. He is also king of our salvation. The psalm says, God has ascended amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Now, I, I don't know if this brings to mind something else in the Bible to you. It did to me of what Paul says in Ephesians. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. He couldn't have ascended unless he first came down, descended. And that's why we call this Christ the King Sunday. Because Christ Jesus, He left heaven. He descended and came here and went to that cross. The cross where He died for every one of us. From the cross, He went to the grave and from that grave, ultimately, He ascended and went back to heaven. We glorify Him because He is the King of our salvation. We also glorify Him because He is King over our lives. The psalm says, Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to Him a psalm of praise. He is King over our lives. Now maybe there's been this question kind of stuck in the back of your head or maybe it's very much in the front. And it's this. If He is King, then why all those shootings that we hear of in the news? If he's king, then why did that person I know and love die? If he is king, then why are children abused? If he is king, then, then why do spouses say and do things to hurt each other? If he's king, then why? Th those questions can loom in our mind. And we're not alone in that. I think there's a reason. God made sure the book of Job was part of the Bible. I don't know how much you know about Job. Job was 
a very a believer a long time ago, and he was a very wealthy man. And in a matter of minutes, he lost everything, even all his children in a horrible accident. And what was Job's response? I wanted to look this If you have a Bible app or if you want to grab one of those pew Bibles in front of you, this is Job chapter 1. It's on page 300. 60 in the Pew Bibles. Job chapter 1, it's verse 21. Again, page 360 if you're using a, a Pew Bible. After hearing all this horrible news, what was Job's response? Verse 21, this is what Job said. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Now Job didn't question God. In fact, after this, uh, even his health left him. And then his wife and his friends came to, to console him but in their trying to console him, they actually planted seeds of doubt. You know, Job, sometimes bad things happen to us because we've done something. You know, confession is good for the soul. Get it out. What did you do wrong? Or, God must not care about you. God, God doesn't love you. And, 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 Time and time again, chapter after chapter, they, they plant the, these seeds of doubt until finally, at, at the end, Job gave in and, and, and he started questioning God. He, he blamed God for this stuff. And then, in a very rare instance, God lost his patience. Jump to the end of Job. Job Chapter 38. This is page uh, 380 in the Pew Bible. Verse 1 of chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you. And you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if, if you understand. Who marked off its dimension? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or wh who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness? When I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place? When I said, this far you may come and no further, here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light and their upraised arm is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me, if you know this, what is the way to the boat of light? And where does darkness reside? Can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths of their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or, see, or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? Who cuts a channel for the torrents of rain and a path for the thunderstorm? And on and on and on he goes for two chapters. Look at the end of that. Chapter 
40, verse 1. Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him accuse as God answer him. You see, God just lays in. What's this show us? Sometimes it may not seem that way to us, but he is king. He is in control. He does see everything. And he does love us. So, if he is king over all, that that means then he is our king. Now, that, that, that's easy to say, right? He is our king. That's easy to say until it gets personal. Yes, Jesus is my king. But then he tells me that the marriage bed should be kept pure. Which means he does not want us to live together before we're married. And then we have problems. It's easy to say, Jesus is my king. And then we see he wants us to give money to him before we spend on, on our own fun thing. That's when it becomes a problem. It's easy to say Jesus is king. But that means, husbands, you're to set aside what you want and do what your spouse needs. It's easy to say Jesus is my king. Until we read wives are to submit to their husbands and put their husbands first. It's easy to say, yeah, Jesus is my king, until we realize that means when Dad tells us to do something at home, we should do it. It is easy to say, Jesus is my king, until it becomes personal. See, the thing is, Jesus is not the king because we say he is. He is our king because he says he is. And as our king then, he left the riches of heaven and lived in poverty so that through that poverty, you and I, we, we would become rich in heaven. He is our king. Because by his death for us, we are forgiven. He loves us that much. And so, if there's some things in your life where it is hard to make him king, maybe that's the very place to work on to glorify Him as your King. We glorify Him as our King in all times. Now it's interesting. This psalm, Psalm 47, was used by, ancient, uh, by the ancient Jews for New Year's celebration. And in a way, we're doing that today. Today is the end of a church worship calendar. Next week, we begin a whole new cycle. Every year in this worship cycle, we review Jesus' life, and, and we're getting ready for Christmas, right, for Jesus' birth. And so the time before that is called Advent. After Christmas is Epiphany, when the wise men came and, and worshipped the king born to the Jews. After Epiphany then is Lent, getting ready for Jesus' suffering and death as, as he was beaten and hailed as King of the Jews on Good Friday. 
and as he rose victorious then on Easter, and after that ascension, when he ascended into heaven to his heavenly kingdom. And so it's fitting then that today we use Psalm 47. It's, in a way, a New Year's celebration for us. It reminds us to glorify Him as our King. King over all nations. King over all creation. King over our salvation. And not only the King, but our King. So my friends, glorify Him not just as the King, Glorify Him as your King. Amen. Please stand. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which transcends our human understanding, guide and guard your hearts and minds until eternal life with our King in heaven. Amen. Let's join together in confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. Please be seated for our next song. Let us glorify our King with our offerings.
Please stand as we approach our King in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory, you have broken the power of the evil one. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope to that day when every creature in heaven and earth and under the earth will acclaim you, King of kings and Lord of lords, and Lord of life. We ask you to be with Debbie Witte and her family, as Debbie's father, Tom McAfee, is in hospice, and from our view, seems like he will soon be going to your side in heaven. Lord, be with Debbie and her family. Remind them, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are king over life and death itself. And Lord, also hear us as we come to you with our own private prayers. And also hear us as we join in the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for the closing song.
This morning we have a wonderful